Welcome to the first video in the tutorial series for Fargo Rates League Management System, or LMS as we call it. I'm Steve Ernst with Fargo Rate, and I'll be your guide as we take a look at creating a division using LMS. In this video, you're going to learn how to configure a new division, how to add locations, teams, and players to that division, and to generate a schedule for it. We'll cover it all, and by the time we get to the end, you'll know everything that you need to create divisions in LMS. With that said, let's get started. After your operator account has been created in LMS, you'll be able to log in with the credentials provided to you. And the very first thing that you're going to see when you log in is this screen. This allows you to create your very first division. So it will automatically put you in your correct league. And for all of these tutorial series will be in the league LMS tutorial league. And we don't have any divisions in this league right now, so we're going to create our first one. And we do that by hitting the Create New Division button. The process of creating a division is split into several distinct parts. The first part is the Configuration section, and that's the page that we're on right now. This is where you specify the most basic information about your division. Uh, for example, what is its name? So we will do my first division and for this particular example we're going to make it a USAPL division but you can also choose BCAPL we will specify how many players are on each team since this is a USAPL division uh, we're, we'll play three sets so we'll say there are three players per team and then we have to specify what the, the team cap is and the cap is the the total Fargo ratings for all the players that are playing that particular evening. So we're going to say uh, 500 Fargo rating points, if you will, per player. So the team cap is 500 times three. So it's 1500. If they exceed that, there will be penalty points that will apply. Specify the game type and we'll say nine ball. Uh, what size table? We're going to play on nine footers. And then we have a test division. So a test division is like a little sandbox area where you can play around, experiment and explore an LMS without um, actually doing any damage anywhere. You can create matches and they won't really have any effect anywhere. There's also some advanced settings. These are set to the most common settings for USAPL in this example, but I can change how the team standings report is, is ordered how the player standings report is ordered. Is there a minimum number of weeks for players that they must play before they show up on reports? And some other details like, do I want to hide player contact info, show unpaid fees, things like that. Once I have this basic information done, I either on the top or on the bottom, I can click the next button and that takes me to the next thing that we have to configure. The next step in configuring our division is specifying the locations where matches will be played. This is very straightforward. You simply hit the new location button and start typing them in. So we have test location A, and let's say that is in new test town, Tennessee. And since I said we're playing on nine foot tables, I will say that this particular establishment has four of them. And if I made a mistake, I can click the edit button right beside the location and change whatever I need to change. I'm going to create another one here just so we have something a little more interesting. This in the same town. And they have, say, six. OK, that's it for creating locations. Um, just like we did on the last screen, we'll click next again. And now we are on the teams and players screen. Adding teams and players to your division is very much the same as uh, adding locations. First, we're gonna, we're gonna add some teams. So we're gonna click on the new team button and we're going to have team A. And I specify what location is their home location. So here's the two that we added on the previous screen. And I will say they play out of location or test location A. And then I can also pick if this is a buy a placeholder. So if, for example, we needed a, a if we had an odd number of teams and we needed a buy, um, I would check this box and it would indicate that that is a buy. So we'll hit OK. And there's our team. 
Now, if when you're creating the division, you actually have the team rosters sitting in front of you with players on there, you can add players to the teams right now. But oftentimes when you're setting up your division, you don't have all that information or it's incomplete. So you don't have to put the players on here on or sign them to a team right now. You can delay that and do it at, an, at a later time. But I'll show you how to do it from since we're since we're here. So just like I could edit a location if I made an error, I can edit the, the team and, and, and change those. And you'll notice over on the right-hand side now, it says Team A, and I can add players. So clicking this Add Player button will add players to the selected team. So we'll add them to Team A. I can search for some players here. And if, if the players are already in the Fargo Rate system, they will just show up as you're typing their names in here. So I'm just going to use some test players. And this tester, tester, he looks like a good one. So I will pick him and pick OK. And there he is. Shows up as assigned to Team A. But let's say that I have a person that I look for. And this person's name is Xavier... Xavier, something like that. And I see that player doesn't exist in Fargo Rate. He's not showing up in my search. So if I'm confident that he's an actually a new player and needs to be added into the Fargo Rate system, I can hit the Create New Player button. Now I will specify his information. Um, some of it's required. We have to know what town and, and state this player is lives in. Um, if you have this additional information, email addresses, phone numbers, that's good. And then you'll specify a starter rating for this player. We have a conversion chart that will be provided to you as an operator that allows you con to convert from old fair play numbers to Fargo rate numbers. Uh, or if you have a pretty good feeling for what Fargo rating this player should have, you can, you can go ahead and type it in here. And let's say I, I know this player a little bit. I know that he plays at about 475 speed. So I'll put 475 in. And that's where, where this player will start from. So I'll hit OK. And that new player will be created. Um, CSI is informed about the new player. So they can um, verify that everything looks good. And that new player is in the system now. So let's add a few more teams. And I am not going to worry about adding all the players to them at this level this time and we'll just set up four teams here we'll make the first two play out of the first location and the last two play out of the second location like so and I can click these and you'll notice they highlight and it changes over on the right hand side and if I go to team A I'll see those players and so on and when I'm comfortable and I have my all my teams added, I can click the next button. And if I had specified an odd number of teams, so let's do that. And let's say that we have team E as well. When I try to go to the next screen, it's going to say, you have an odd number of teams. Would you like us to add a buy team for you? And if we say yes, it will go ahead and do that and add that buy team. So the last piece that we have is creating the schedule. Creating schedules for divisions can often be a very complex and very time-consuming process, as I'm sure that you all know. Uh, we try to simplify that for you. And as the final step of creating your division, you can create a schedule. You don't have to do it at this point, uh, but you can if you would like to. And you only have to specify a couple simple things. Um, you want to pick the date that your schedule is going to start. And let's say that we are going to start on the 28th of December, Wednesday night. And I can do one of two things. I can specify how many rounds of play I want to do. And think of, think of that meaning how many round robins. If I want every team to play everyone three times, I could put in three there. Or if I had a more constrained schedule and I knew that I wanted to play for 18 weeks, I could put that in as well. And then we have the start time, which is completely optional. So for this example, I want everybody to play everybody three times. So I'll put a three in there. And I can then click the generate schedule button. We'll get to some, what some of these other buttons mean here in a second. 
but I can click generate schedule and it does the work and there we go. We have a schedule here. I can view it in match view and I can see that team B is playing at A and E at D and, and there's the buy team that we added. So C has a buy that first week. And I can go back to the calendar view and look at it like this. So some of these other buttons we would use if we wanted to actually like insert a date that we weren't going to play. For example, if we didn't want to play on January 4th, we could insert a no play event and the scheduler would honor that and say, oh, I don't want to generate matches for that day. We're going to get more into that in the scheduling video that's part of this series. The other two buttons are the export and import of the schedule. So I can click export schedule and it takes a schedule that was generated and it exports it to an Excel file. So in this particular case, I have this screen or this Excel file that was generated. There are two tabs. The teams tab has what the numbers actually mean. So number one is team A, number six is the buy team. And then I go back to the schedule tab Column A is the weeks of play. So there's 15 weeks of play. And for example, in week nine, team five is playing at team one. Team two is playing at three and four is playing at six. So you can go in and you can modify this. If you have some special tweaks that you need to make to the schedule, you can make them in Excel, save that file, and then use the import button to actually import that modified schedule back in um, and so forth. Once you're done and you have your schedule created, you can modify this at any point in the future. And again, we're going to cover that in, in the scheduling video. But once you're done, you'll hit the create division button. It's going to do some work. And there we go. We have our division. Um, I can see up at the top that I'm in my LMS league my tutorial league, my first division was created. I've got my five teams that are assigned. And then over on the right, I can actually see the upcoming matches for the 28th. Okay, well, that is it for this video. Thanks for listening. Uh, again, there are several other videos in this series, such as what happens if I have a team that adds or gets added late? What if a location I'm playing in you know, burns down. Those sorts of things will be covered, um, modifying the schedule, and then kind of an in-depth deep dive into entering match data or match results. Okay, again, this is Steve Ernst with Fargo Rate. Thank you for listening, and we'll join you in another video.